Hello everyone, thanks for joining this Gaia X session during the ecosystem experience uh, by OVH Cloud. Um, this is a very great moment for us. Uh, we are working on this project uh, with Pierre Gonlier and myself for a couple of times already, and we are very happy to dig inside with you how to shape European data spaces and to discuss the future of cloud in Europe. So. Let me introduce myself. So, uh, Alban Schmutz, I'm in charge of strategic development and public affairs at OVH Cloud. I'm also a member of the board of uh, Gaia X and I'm chairman of the trade association, uh, cloud infrastructure services provided in Europe, gathering uh, infrastructure cloud provider across Europe who operates together. Pierre, can you introduce yourself? Hi, Alban. Thank you very much for the uh, introduction. My name is Pierre Gonlier. I'm working at OVH Cloud as a solution architect and I'm also a member of the GAIA-X community. So, Alban, there has been a lot of press coverage and news about GAIA-X in the uh, recent days and weeks. Can you tell me a bit more about it? Yes, with great pleasure. Thanks, Pierre, for asking this question. So, GAIA-X is a project that started uh, uh, about one year ago uh, at a political level between the French and German ministers of economy, say, OK, Guys, what do we have to do to discuss uh, and to deal with sovereignty of uh, data in Europe and especially uh, industrial data? And this project is about creating a European data infrastructure. And this is not about creating a new company as it, but is to deal on, on the main principles uh, regarding uh, on how to build a, an open framework to address the use of the cloud users across Europe. This is based on European values, on transparency, openness, reversibility, security, and all together have to build a European uh, data infrastructure. So basically, there are two sides in uh, that, uh, in that um, uh, I would say, Gaia X. So we are covering both the development of uh, use cases, so the so-called European data spaces. This is something that is expected uh, on the political level as well by the European Commission on developing areas where data from industry can be shared in the healthcare sector and the financial sector, uh, in many other sectors, in the manufacturing, to be able to share data uh, between players of uh, this area, between competitors or between players of the same value chain based on open data or not open data, on clear rules on intellectual property and to create added value for Europe. So this is one side of the coin. This is very important. The other side of the coin is to be able to develop what is the so-called um, infrastructure and how are uh, providers working together, even if you are competing on the market, to have something that is workable and where data can be moved easily from one cloud provider to another. So uh, Gaia X is to be able to move to have both things working together. And this is something very important. Openness, we think, is the key for success uh, for Europe in cloud. Wow, that sounds like a big challenge. So now that we understand a bit more the scope of Gaia X, can you tell me a bit more who are the members and who participates there? Yes, th thanks for this question, Pierre. So Gaia X is a very, very broad project. So um, last June, uh, Peter Altmaier, Minister of Economy of Germany, and Bruno Le Maire, Ministry of, uh, of Economy of France, uh, announced the future creation of the GAIA-X organization uh, with 22 founding members. 22 founding members, so 11 French members, 11 German members, representing a broad view on the market. Basically, uh, this includes uh, providers, big users of, uh, of cloud uh, in Europe, but also um, uh, research organizations and trade associations. So to be able to represent all the flavors and all the main stakeholders regarding uh, cloud in Europe. And so this organization has been started now and has been registered as a non-profit organization in Belgium uh, mid of September and is open to for other companies to join. And today we already have on the top of the 22 members already more than 100 organizations that applied to join the organization. So coming from 14 European countries and even some abroad, 
non-European countries. So this is something very important. Gaia X is something very inclusive. And on the top of the association, not everything is going through the association. There's also a community approach, um, very close to the open source uh, uh, communities uh, most of you will know, and to be able to have everyone working together to deliver uh, what Gaia X uh, will be offering and the promise of Gaia X. Okay, I understand a bit now who are the participants, members and stakeholders, but that sounds like a very political project then, isn't it? Yes, Pierre, you're right. This, this project is very highly political backed. So I mentioned already, um, Peter Altmaier and Bruno Le Maire are from Germany and France. And, but, uh, in September of this year, Ursula von der Leyen, uh, the president of the European Commission also mentioned Gaia X in her speech to, uh, on, on the state of the union in front of the European Parliament. So meaning that, uh, um, the, Commission is already backing the uh, Gaia X project as something very key for the future of Europe and saying, okay, our future uh, in the cloud industry and the data sharing uh, topic uh, where we're going to create value will be based on Gaia X. This is something very strong from uh, a backing of uh, at the political level. Okay, so I understand this is a very European focused project, but let's be a bit provocative here. What about US and Chinese providers? So thanks for this question, uh, Pierre. This is a quite usual question. So Gaia X is something very interesting. This is the answer from, I would say, Europe on the on the evolution of the market of cloud, where uh, we need to have uh, sovereignty. So nevertheless, uh, Gaia X is uh, based on openness. So every organization, even non-European organization, are welcomed to join the Gaia X project. So, but uh, what is important to understand is that within the GAIAX project, we have defined something that is our name, the policy rules. So uh, basically, these are the set of controls to uh, on reversibility, data protection, security, transparency that uh, are going to materialize what we name the European values. And so all together, we are defining these values and uh, I would say, pushing the, 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 I would say, all players to apply for it. So if you want to join Gaia X, you need to agree with these policy rules. And for example, uh, regarding uh, data protection, uh, you will have to agree on giving the choice of storing and process the data exclusively in Europe to give, give the choice to, that, to the customer to do so. And uh, if they want to do so, or uh, if you are uh, submitted to uh, um, extraterritorial regulations uh, from non-European countries, you will have to express from each single services which service are, uh, are under the control of extraterritorial regulation from uh, coming outside of Europe. And so this will bring transparency to the market. So this is something very important. So we have two sets of rules, one for uh, data and software, another one for infrastructure, and these are at the core of Gaia X. So this is something very important and uh, gives the ab ability to bring on board Uh, members that are non-European. On the top of that, the board of directors uh, can only be constituted by members of representing companies with worldwide headquarters in Europe. So every other uh, group uh, uh, are open, so technical groups, uh, development groups, etc., are open to any organization. Nevertheless, I would say the highest, uh, uh, the highest body in the, into the organization which is uh, the board of directors, has the specificity to be sure that at any point of time, European values will be at the core of the GAIAX development. Um, and no, I, I want to say that I gave, uh, I would say, a certain sense uh, of uh, the project in general, but I think you are all interested to have more information about what are the deliverables and the current demonstrator. Pierre, can you give us a, a view on that? So, yes. In terms of deliverable, we have a very packed timeline. If we go a bit in the past, um, last October, we set up the ambition for GAIA-X. We had the first presentation of the first two demonstrator in June of this year. In July, we met with the Redstream 1 and Redstream 2 of GaiaX people and we exchanged about how we can implement business scenario on top of the core federated services. 
And by mid-November, we should have the release of the second version of the technical paper. That, together with the specification we are working on, we should have the first release of the MDG, Minimal Variable Gaze, by beginning of this year. About the first two demonstrators, the first one, as a reminder, is um, Service Scheduler, Multi-Cloud Service Scheduler. And the second demonstrator is a prototype of a catalog search engine. For the release mid-November, we are working on version 2 of this prototype, where we will have the self-description of real services um, filling, filled by uh, actual real cloud service providers. And we hope to be able to have service composition, not yet ordering, but uh, at least service composition. So, Pierre, what is a Gaia X stack? That's a very good question. A Gaia X stack can be decomposed on three layers. At the bottom layer, you have the specification document that are meant to comply with the policy rules, um, as you described earlier. And on top of the infrastructure layer, we have the MVG group. The MVG group is responsible for implementing the various core services and prototype of the core services. As an example, we are working on a catalog, federated catalog. We are working on the identity management on a service compositor also. Then you will have third party companies that will implement their business cases on top of these core services implemented by the MVG. We can consider the MVG is kind of developing a reference implementation of the core services that will be open sourced and reusable by everyone who wishes to create other um, and implement other business cases on top of uh, federated services, on top of the um, infrastructure from GAIX. And everything has to be compliant with the policy rules. So part of the MVG group is also helping to write down the specification since along the way of implementing, we are also prototyping and selecting the technical stack specification that will enable us to write down the specification. So this is a very great, I would say, project, an open project. So if I want to join the project and help you to develop this minimum viable Gaia, so this MVG, or even if I want to join to go uh, and build use cases to develop these famous European data spaces, how can I do that? So, so looking at the slides, you have three main layers and you can contribute to any of those three layers. You can be an academic and um, willing to contribute on writing down the specification. You can be a developer and uh, wishes to join the uh, prototyping core development of the MVG. And you can also be an industrial partner and wishes to implement your business case on top of the core services. To do so, the entry point is the technical architecture paper from GAIA-X. That's the reference paper you will have to read to understand how the core services are structured and um, linked together. Then we are using as Alban mentioned, a very community-driven and open-source way of development. We are using GitLab with access to repository, and here everyone is um, uh, welcome to open an issue, made request, and review the source code and comment from others, like in any open-source project. Lastly, we are working on um, GaiaX uh, handbook that will help anyone to have the technical onboarding and um, have more uh, be at ease to, to contribute to GAIX. Finally, um, we have a different way of communicating. The mailing list, you can join using the email at the bottom of the slide. And also, the um, if you are interested by joining the association, you can send an email to the uh, second email at the top, at the bottom of the slide. So, so th thanks for describing all this. I have one question. So we are often asked when we meet people in uh, meetings discussing GaiaX, okay, how can I be GaiaX com uh, compliant? How can my service be uh, referenced within GaiaX uh, the environment? So where do we stand on that? And how can, uh, can uh, organizations join by declaring services? <clears throat> so at the root of GaiaX, you have the notion of self-description services. Those are small um, files that will help you 
as a provider, service provider or data provider to describe the services you are wishing to register on GaiaX. And you are very welcome to join the working group writing down the specification because you will have, you will bring the expertise of your verticals and able to write down the taxonomy and autology necessary to describe the services you are, you would like to, to expose inside GaiaX. So the first step is to join the works, the working stream. And the second step is to read, contribute and try to demonstrate how yourself you can describe your existing services. So thanks Pierre for, for all this explanation. So I want just to summarize a bit. So here, uh, if, if someone wants to join us and declaring a service within GaiaX, I would say first join us and be part of, uh, uh, of this community. So, and to make this possible for people, I would say organization that are not part of the communicate of the community uh, from now. Uh, so we will, you will have to wait a little bit also to have all the specification and the reference implementation available. So, uh, this is targeted for uh, the beginning of next year. So I hope this will be very soon for, uh, for all of you. And, uh, this is something where uh, you need also to understand that you are all free to come and join us. So now uh, I wanted to thank uh, Pierre for uh, the explanations uh, we had together. And it's time for a happy uh, live chat together. So uh, we are waiting for your questions and happy to answer them.